Hello and welcome to this behind the scenes where we take a look at Elmira, Queen of the Fairies. Every fairy realm needs a queen and I think it is a great responsibility to properly illustrate her. When I think of a fairy queen, I think of a deep connection to nature as though she's the mother to the forest. I imagine great strength holding hands with tenderness and a gracefulness that permeates all she does. I went through many iterations of Elmira before settling on her flowing skirt and ornate breastplate and pauldrons. The base of the breastplate was made from EVA foam, I believe it was 5 millimeters, and I glued it together with contacts. The detailing on the breastplate was made with foam clay, which was my first time trying this product out and I am hooked. It's an incredible material that's moldable like air dry clay is, but when it dries, it's EVA foam. I was able to manipulate it into all kinds of designs and it had a finesse I could never get from trying to carve it from sheets of foam. Oh, I love it so much. It's a lot of fun to work with and I would definitely recommend it. The designs on the breastplate and armor I made as I went, and it took me a little bit longer to settle on a balanced design, but I did love how it turned out and working intuitively instead of really to a strict guideline. I feel like there is merit in both having a plan and in not having a plan, and it's kind of good to try both ways out sometimes. Maybe push yourself out of your comfort zone in either direction that may be. To make the pauldrons, I slowly heated my cut foam pieces and shaped them over a little brass pot to get a nice curve for the shoulder to nestle into. And from there, more filigree work to tie in the designs of the breastplate. I primed the breastplate and pauldrons with Plasti Dip and then a coat of spray paint. Weathering armor honestly has to be one of the most fun and transformative stages in this process. It's a little terrifying the first time you smear black paint all over your pristine gold or silver piece, but as you begin blotting away the excess and all the texture and age begins to reveal itself, it gets kind of hard to stop. I can't get over what a difference it made on this particular piece with all the little nooks and crannies in the detailing where the dark paint could make those embossed parts really stand out. We shot late into autumn and the trees were at their most explosive color and my wonderful model embodied her queen and oh, it was so much fun to shoot. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Behind the Scenes. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.